What's up, y'all? It's your boy Smurz One. Today we have Momentum Art Technologies with my homie Till One. Check out this dope episode. We're gonna talk about the paint business, graffiti in Chicago, and much more. I'll holler at y'all later. Make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button. Peace out. today man um if you could just give us a little breakdown of momentum art tech and um if you could tell us what it is and just tell me the whole idea behind it so momentum when we started it uh 15 years ago uh, me and my brother uh which is my brother's c3po um we were um there was a paint shortage that was going on it was about i think about a year's worth of uh, no paint in the city uh the Montana store that was open at that time had closed down. So we had literally went through like a drought of a year and we were talking about how, you know, somebody needs to pick up the slack and all that. And we we're just like, why don't we do it? So making the connections and talking to the people, especially the old Montana store, um, we did, uh, we, we started bringing in the paint. Uh, we started with, um, with a brand that's no longer around is, uh, well, not in the US, but it's Iron Leck. And then we um, started to expand that, well, instead of being, uh, for example, a Nike store, we wanted to be like a Foot Locker or like a, a Walmart or whatever. You know, we wanted to compare us to another company. We said, they, they can't rug pull us. Like if they take the brand from us, we'll still be around, you know, right. because all we need to do is look for another brand to fill the, the shelves. And that's what we've been doing for, it's already been 15 years, this, this, uh, wow. 2023. So how many how many brands do you offer? Uh, right now at this moment, we we have uh, three major brands, and then there are little uh, sub brands inside that brand. Like, so we have Montana, Spanish Montana. Um, they're water based. They're hardcore. Um, we have all their their tall boys, like the big cans. Um, then we also carry uh, Cobra, high pressure, low pressure. We also carry their tall boys. And then we have a brand right now that we uh, just started bringing in uh, not too long ago. It's called Double A. Um, they're from uh, Europe, but it's being distributed through uh, Canada and they're moving to the U.S. soon. So, OK, so um, in reference to like your business is like selling spray paint and, um, and selling art supplies, like um, I'm sure like graffiti artists are not your only customer. No. Like what other customer base do you have? So that's the first dilemma that me and C3 uh, ran into. Our first year open, um, winter came, and you know everybody knows that Chicago's uh, very cold. We have very bad winters, uh, so business like literally stopped. A lot of the writers weren't painting out as much because you know the cold. So you know you can't blame them for that. Nobody wants to die, but you know, some of them were, but not as much to keep the business going, right? So we started saying, well, who else? We started questioning ourselves, like who else uses spray paint? And uh, we started talking about the hobbyists, like the, the mom and pop you know, stores, or uh, the woman that wants to paint a wicker chair or a table, a vase, et cetera, et cetera. So we're like, okay, let's, let's start reaching out to these hobbyist groups on Facebook. So we start sending them little you know, messages like, hey, we're in Oak Park, we have, you know, this spray paint, it's higher quality than the stuff you guys use because we know that you can only get this stuff in uh, Home Depot or if you go to H Michael's, you're paying an arm and a leg for that. So they started to come and then they started to spread the word amongst their own little like groups and stuff. Nice. Um, but it wasn't enough because, you know, there was a lot of writers that were buying paint from us. So we started going to the to groups like the 501 Garrison, which is the the actual group that George Lucas gave permission for them to dress up like Star Wars. So their costumes are movie, uh, ex a perfect 
replicas and they used the molds that st the Lucas company used. Oh, wow. So we reached out to them and some of them started buying here. Then we started going with the... Uh, the guys who build the little lowrider cars and the racing cars and all, you know, the airplane enthusiasts and all those guys. And we just started getting different people walking in and business picked up, you know, because it was like, it's not only for outdoor usage, it's also for indoor, we were telling them, you know, and they were using it. Um, and that's basically what, how we grew the business outside of just graffiti. Like it's not, you know, just that. Just for graffiti, right? Right. right. All right, sis. So um You've been involved in the graffiti scene, hip hop scene in Chicago for over 30 plus years. Like, how do you feel about the graffiti scene right now? So I, I think, you know, the, the, the graffiti scene is not every generation that evolves and changes to something else, right? Um, and it's sometimes not because of, um, laziness or dislike or whatever it changes because um there's uh, like for example in the 90s and the 80s uh, graffiti was very uh, uh train oriented it was everything based around the trains that's why a lot of you know there's still so a lot of crews that are very trained they paint panels and stuff like that um but a lot of the graph now is very street and highway uh, based and the reason why that is, is because the, the trains became so difficult to paint. Uh, and, you know, there's cameras everywhere. And, uh, so they have to evolve. It, it's not that they're being lazy or they're changing their, their style or it's like, oh, they're not being real. It's just that they like to do the graffiti uh, and they want to get known and seen, but they just can't do it the same way that the generation before did it because it wasn't as hard for them to do it before. So Till, man, what, what other um, projects do you have going on other than running the store? So we have started our movie that's documenting the Chicago graffiti scene. Um, we're doing it from the 70s all the way up um, to present day. We, uh, it's called It Was Written, and you can see that online. It was written, the movie.com, I believe is the, the domain. And then we also started a new uh, gallery in Pilsen. It's, um, a graffiti digital uh, immersive uh, thing that you guys can go in there and with uh, an actual spray can that's digital, you write on the screens. Oh, nice. And then you'll be able to like uh, practice and do your letters. So what we're trying to do with that space is uh, we're working on the back as well. So in the yard, you'll be able to paint permission walls. And then the, uh, we're opening us uh, another section of the gallery in the back area, which is was the old garage. We're going to close that off. And so you'll be able to walk through the whole space and it'll be digital, real, and then gallery again. So it'll be nice. two different, you know, spot. The whole spot will just be blown out all for graffiti. Wow, man. So um, what, what is your Instagram tags? Like, how can people find you? So the Instagram for the store is uh, at Momentum Art Tech. And then the my personal Instagram is at Teal Paint. And that's T with two E's. So it's T-E-E-L Paints at, uh, in the Instagram. Um, and then the, the gallery is at Momentum Art Labs on Instagram as well. Dope, dope. Man, y'all go check out my homeboy Till, man. Make sure y'all hit that follow and like all his pictures, man. We got to go see this gallery, man. I can't wait to try that out. Absolutely. Yeah, man. All right, thanks for checking out My Two Cents. It's your boy Smurfs One. We just hollered at the homie Till about Momentum. If you're in the Oak Park area, come check them out. They got all of the spray paint that you can um <laughs> all the spray paint that you need to do what you need to do so i'll holler at y'all i'll talk to y'all later peace